You know what they say, kids? Time flies when you're having fun, and I guess we're having fun because it feels like forever since I tore something down. Now, I was kindly given uh, a few items uh, this week, and thank you to Leslie for sending these in. This is a carbon monoxide alarm and a little Fitbit gadget. That, that looks pretty cute. I think that one is actually a working gadget rather than the broken one, but that's fine. And of course, to Chinny of Chinny Vision and Ultra Steve. And we're gonna start uh, that one because, and I think um, Ultra Steve is handling the calendar distribution for Chinny's Chinny Vision calendars. And I know we are halfway through the year and early in July, um, but this came about because I have Chinny's 2018 calendar on my wall and it's still on April. And uh, I get a lot of use out of my calendars because I forget to turn the pages. But look at this, isn't this a wonderful thing? It's so shiny. Um, oh, I'm on there actually. Oh, thanks. Brilliant. All screenshots taken from the original hardware, 11 formats, 8 bit micro. Now, if you've been on the fence about getting one of these, um, now you have a chance to see one. Um, when all the hype, not the beginning of the year when the calendars are hyped, but the middle of the middle of the season here. And I'm just going to choose a random month. Let's choose a random month. Oh, it's so shiny. Mm, oh, Fire Lord. Let's see. May 2020. We had some Fire Lord here, Spectrum, Commodore 64. Hang on, two Commodore 64s, CPC, and another Spectrum. So I don't know if all the, if it was on, available on all the all the all the best systems like the BBC Micro. I suppose not. Let's have a look at another one. Mm, so where are we now, though? We are in June. Power Drift. Ah. Oh, Power Drift is so awesome looking, right? When you see this game, I always get confused between Power Drift and Buggy Boy. So yeah, hopefully these will clear it up. And looking, there's an ST version, the Amiga version, CPC, MSX. My gosh, MSX. So yeah, I do like the old uh, Chinny Chinny Vision calendars. I'm gonna just dig in another random. I'm so tempted. I think Chinny, if if you if you're listening, on your next calendar, how about pictures of some of the hardware. I would like a sexy MSX on, uh, you know, for May perhaps. And for April would be a cheeky BBC Micro. Chubaruba, Chubaruba, Chubaruba. There you go, that's Chubaruba. Right, anyway, let's put that aside. I'm gonna hang that on the wall. I'll probably set it to uh, I don't know, January again. We'll reset that. Now, first thing um, we're gonna have a quick look at. I don't think we're gonna discombobulate this because I don't like breaking um, things that aren't already broken, if you know what I mean. I don't like I don't like to damage stuff. Um, and I really like fitness gadgets. So let's open this up and have a look inside though. Mm. <coughs> ah! so, yep, yeah, stab myself in the palm there. But this <laughs> This is, um, I think, Fitbit's first-ish gadgets, right? Because I used to have a Fitbit, the little thing on your wrist. Um, but I think before they did all that, they started with these things. And these are basically pedometers. And I think they have a wireless, and you can touch the screen to go through some sort of capacitive touch. But interestingly enough, they run on a battery um, that's non-rechargeable. So there you go, but that, that was a bit bitey, wasn't it? A bit bitey to uh, get that on there. And I guess that's because there's a nice rubber seal in it. Yeah, I think that Fitbit, have, you know, they've, they're probably losing traction in the market now. There's so many of these fitnessy type gadgets, um, which are becoming ever more connected. So it's not about the gadget itself, it's about the infrastructure that the gadget lives in, you know, and if you can, um, connect it to your food app and your buying trainers app and all of that. That's why Under Armour has bought my fitness pal, but eh, I think that's a nice thing. I might actually give that a go. Thank you again, Leslie. I'll I might just play with that for a bit. Maybe if it breaks in the future we'll we'll nom it. Right, carbon monoxide detector. So these are pretty important if you're running any kind of a flu in your house, you like an open fire, you've got like an open fire or a stove, and sometimes you'd have to put an additional 
vent brick in your house because that's a requirement by building control to make sure that you have adequate airflow for that thing to be drawing through your chimney etc and there's always the risk of any device and I suppose even a just a, a gas uh, fire like a sealed gas fire that's got a problem um, could uh, choke you out of your carbon monoxide and it's one of those weird things I believe and you can correct me if I'm wrong down below it's one of those gases that basically replaces oxygen and you don't really know about it you, you're just huffing it in you don't detect there's anything wrong in it but it's basically starving your brain which is not good and uh, I'm sure there are a lot of people who die each year as a result of that which is pretty pretty sad in this day and age so yeah it probably is worth picking one up uh, I, I certainly should get another one because they do die from time to time like this one clearly has um, I say clearly as we haven't even tried it yet, but just you, we assume it has. But it is interesting to see what's inside. So let's see if we can pop this out. I'm just going to see if there's a screw underneath here, like there sometimes is. No. Now some of these alarms, though, they say um, I remember buying one, and it said it, you could only use it for a certain amount of time, and after a certain year or whatever, you have to bin it. So I don't know if there's something consumable in it, or if it's just a precaution. By the way, these red things are to stop you putting the battery cover back on. <laughs> That's becoming quite common now, isn't it? Where you've got devices to stop you just taking the battery out, to stop it beeping at you annoyingly. Right, so interesting stuff here. A lot of interesting stuff. So the first thing is the siren. Look at that. That is a nice piezo buzzer. So we might salvage that. I think I'll keep that for projects. We've got... Um, Looks like an inductor here, L1. Tell me if you think that's an inductor. It looks like it. It's by East. No other markings on it. And we have a little capacitor next to it, just a 10 microfarad. Again, useful. There's loads of harvestable stuff off this. A couple of LEDs, a nice through hole tack switch, and a crystal. And not quite sure what's the speed of that crystal, but we could um, probably put a oscilloscope on that if we have particularly keen, which I don't think we are necessarily. And um, on the bottom, let's see what, what kind of microcontroller they're using. It's an interesting package. It's quite a chunky monkey. And there we go. It's a PIC. A PIC 16 F883. So yeah, just a pretty run-of-the-mill standard PIC chip, which is nice. Um, you could harvest that actually if it's a 16F. Yes, you can. So you could reprogram that and keep that on, use that for your projects again. I might just do that. I think I will. Um, just your series of normal capacitors, uh, transistors, resistors. Some zero, zero ohm resistors that are acting as jumpers, you can see here. I wonder if there are anything to do with these test points here. Um, in fact, looking at it, that is a standardish, pickish looking programming header. So that's the programming header for that, I'm sure. If you get a pick kit, you could probably just put it on here and program it in situ. That would be cute. And then we have a an area here. I thought it was conformal coating, but it's just wax. It's under a wax, which is interesting. Obviously something a little bit sensitive, so it's an amplifier, I'm sure, of some description. And again, bunch, a whole bunch here, by the way, of jumpers, zero value jumpers. Why have they done that? My guess, if I'm gonna, is to save on space on the PCB. Yeah, there's nothing on this side. It's a single sided PCB, so the jumpers are acting as the tracking on this side. And this is the sensor, though. This is something else, isn't it? As you can see, it's there, KID 800. Now, I'm not seeing too many warnings on it, so I don't know if it's going to be bad or harmful, but I think let's take this apart and have a look. Because, again, we don't really know if we have a look. Actually, it says here, date of manufacturer, 2012. The 14th of the 6th, 2012. Replace seven years after installation so <laughs> I think I think we can safely uh, 
take this apart without feeling too guilty. But I always wonder how you're supposed to test them. I mean, it's got a test button on it. That's what that thing on the front is. But what are you testing? It's really you're just testing the battery, I think, at that point. So what is inside a uh, carbon monoxide detector? We'll have to just pop that open. Sorry, sorry, I went quiet there. I was just searching for a blade. Um, I'm almost tempted to get out the Geiger counter, but I don't think I've heard of these being radioactive, and it has no radioactive warning warnings. It feels like a silica gel pouch stuffed in the end, so it's obviously looking to measure gas, and that's to dry it out. It doesn't like moisture. So if you've got a carbon monoxide detector, I wonder if um, we look at the instructions, it tells you not to put them in kitchens or something. So there you go. And looking in here, you might just see it. There's a very teeny, teeny hole right there at the tip of my knife. And I suspect that's where the where it's sampling. Look at that. Is this... um? Is this like a, an ionizing chamber? I wonder if this is, is like an ionizing No! Can you hear that? It's actually got a liquid in it. My word, this is a fascinating thing, isn't it? Well, there's the markings on it. Wow. I think I want to now do some research of how the heck this works. I don't want to, I just don't want to just pop it open. Um, just in case it leaks goo all over the place. Someone's been on the internet. Yeah, well, fascinating. So apparently there's all sorts of different ways of detecting the carbon monoxide and they were describing these biomimetic sensors, which are a bit like those ones where you have a piece of card with this little circle that goes um, black, you know, the pink circle that goes black. And then you have metal oxide ones, which are something to do with and they're on a chip. You know, you've got a, like a solid state or electrochemical sensors, which apparently, yeah, this has to be, I should think. Um, it's just fascinating. So it's got some sort of liquid in it, which is re reacting with carbon monoxide, and that's changing its electrical properties. But just think how tiny amount you need, considering it's going through this packet of silica gel that was hot, uh, heat shrunk on there. Um, I wonder how quickly they react. I mean, that's kind of fascinating, isn't it? You'd think it must be a pretty slow reacting thing but obviously react faster than uh, you you'd need to uh, expire so hmm bit of a rambling one there a bit, a bit random a bit rambling but i think that's quite interesting i do like the idea of uh, harvesting some of these i might to put together a box of all my harvestings and just send it to one of you guys out on patreon land um see if you can make something with it i do have actually this is a very good point um, I do actually have quite a lot, I was looking on the shelf, stock of PIC microcontrollers. And I haven't used them right now for in projects for a while, so I have a whole bunch. I probably don't need them. Um, uh, best um, use for them down below, get some. How about that? There you go. Fantastic. As ever, thanks for watching.